bucks for everybody here. Yeah. Right? You know, right. Hey, we're all senior citizens. We know about these <laughs> things. <laughs> okay, without further ado, uh, uh, we'll start with Ken. Is that light going to bug you there, Ken? No, and I'm going to, is it, I'm, I'll probably move around a little bit. Okay, so. very good. John, as always, thank you very much, and I see uh, quite a few familiar faces. Um, I'm going to be recording it today so that what we do in the class, what shows up on my screen, will be available on YouTube after sometime this evening. I'll probably get it uploaded. It'll be completely unedited because if I took time to edit it, I'd never get it up there. But it will be raw, and I'll show you where to go to find it. If you go to kenspencer.com, K-E-N-S-P-E-N-C-E-R, and I'll repeat this at the end because someone's also got to remind me to stop the recording at the end. And if we click over here on Mac Nexus, which is the Mac users group, I have all the classes I do always, and you can always go get them, and they're on YouTube. And this one will be up there. It'll be right under Vote for Ken for President, because I'm running for president of Mac Nexus. I've been on the board for quite a while, so that's enough of my self-serving things there. Um, I will give one other quick plug. Myself and my business partner, Pete Losey, have a company called Empower Mac, and we do full weekend conferences. We have one coming up here. This was the last one. We just did iOS 7, and they're up at Roseville at Sierra View Country Club. And they're, uh, they're great prices, great return. John's come to quite a few of them. Uh, Carl Gordon, that used to be here, has come to quite a few, and they're, uh, they're great. So uh, they're wonderful classes, and they're hands-on. I like to say the Mac Nexus classes we do, which is the first Saturday of every month down at St. Mark's, is more like a, la a lecture situation. This is more like a lab situation. So we do as many iOS classes now as we do Mac classes. But anyway, if you want to see the videos, kenspencer.com, click on Mac Nexus. So, put that behind the scenes. And good, that's working. All right. <clears throat> So I'm lucky enough to have this application on my Mac that allows me to put what we're doing on the iPad wirelessly right up here to the screen. So I'm going to talk about iOS 7, and I'm sure at the end there's going to be a lot of questions because iOS 7 is new. Um, Apple didn't refresh it just to make it be something new and something harder to use. There's really a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that will come to fruition later on with other apps and when the app developers develop different things and there's some, some new chips going on. And i got to tell you, there's some real key things in iOS 7 that don't get much mentioned, but are fantastic. One is, we all know that we get the password heck, and a lot of times where our passwords get all... It's, it's the worst thing. It's the biggest call I get. Well, there's what's called, and it's coming, it's not available yet, but it'll be keychain in the cloud. So in other words, You'll save it. It'll save. First of all, it'll make up a very robust, long password if you want it to for certain sites. Virtually uncrackable. It'll remember it, and it'll also show up on your other iOS devices. For instance, if you go to Bob's Burgers for online ordering and make up a username and a password, it'll remember that and give it to your other iOS devices. And if you have a Mac, it'll give it to Mac. And that's all stored in the cloud, but it's also very secure on your device. And in the not too distant future, you won't even have to fill that in anymore. You'll use your fingerprint and it will put your password in. And that's where, like, the 5S, which I have there, has got a fingerprint sensor. So you, you'll no longer, and I know how it is, it's hard to enter those passwords. So. The other thing is, um, who here has Siri on their devices? You know if you have, um, don't, you don't have Siri on your iPad. I have it on my phone, but I don't, I never use it, I don't know. Okay, we're going to get into Siri a little bit because while typing is such a pain on these, we're going to show you how you can use Siri to do the typing. And Siri is remarkably, remarkably better is that than iOS 7. IPad? iPad Mini, iPad 3, and iPad 4, and on October 22nd, the iPad 5, we think is coming out, so it'll be on that. iPhone 4S, iPhone 5, and the fifth generation of the iPod Touch. They all have Siri built in. And you'll know, I mean, and it's not a software thing. If you don't have it on your device, it's not like the upgrade will get it to you. And you can tell if you have it by simply pressing and holding your home button. 
what can I say? Uh, and, Siri, and Siri comes up and tells you what she can do with a good internet. And you have to have an internet connection for Siri. But I'll go into that a little bit more. The other thing we have on the I, in iOS 7 is a thing called verification lock. Those of you that have iPhones, I know I'm reluctant in large situations to have my iPhone out and visible because that's $650. That's the same thing as putting to the to a thief. That's like putting a $500 bill on my thigh and just saying, have at it. Verification lock will make it so your phone cannot be activated without your Apple ID if, so, if it's lost or stolen. They can't go to Apple. They can't go to AT&T. They can't reactivate it without your Apple ID. So therefore, it has no value on the aftermarket. So therefore, there's going to be less, less staff there. So, is that a bad shadow? Actually, yeah, I'm looking right My halo there. effect? I'll I'm go over here. Down, uh, That's fine. I'm mainly for this instance. So, um, verification lock is, but when you go sell your device, you're going to be able to put in your password and completely wipe it out. But the thief can't wipe it out. So, you're... Apple ID password becomes very critical and very important, so make sure you remember that. Beyond everything else, remember that password. Um, I'm going to pull up my notes here for a second just to make sure I'm doing everything. Oh, by the way, who? any of you were old MobileMe.Mac users? Anybody here besides John? Uh, I, I did it for a while. Did you get the thing that says your extra storage on iCloud is going to expire? Yes. Okay. Probably you weren't too full and it's okay. Uh, I just don't use it. Okay, you're fine then. It just was something that came up September 30th. Okay. So, um, Does anybody here listen to much radio online, like Pandora? Okay, so Apple has a new thing called iTunes Radio. iTunes Radio is very much like Pandora. There's a huge selection of things that you can do with it. But the neat thing with it is you get it for free, and there'll be some ads to support it. But if you pay $25 a year, you get it completely ad-free. And what it also does is it takes all the music you currently have, puts it up to the cloud, and gets it back to you cleaned up. So uh, iTunes Radio, try it out. It's really good. You can pick. You can make up your own radio stations and stuff. Do remember, it's streaming radio. So if you have a data plan and you're not using the Wi-Fi here, you're going to get socked a little bit with that data. It's not too bad. Um, I think email and Safari are two of the biggest things we do on this device. And I want to show you how to make mail a little bit easier. So if I go into mail, and the new mail, well, first off, let's make our fonts a little bigger. Because everybody, the big complaint in iOS 7 is I can't read anything. So if you go to system settings, the gray gear, and you go down here, to accessibility, I'm sorry, you just click on general on the left and then come on down to accessibility. It's right here. Accessibility. And under accessibility, you'll see bold text. Now, if you turn bold text on, it's going to say it needs to reboot your device, so I'm not going to do it right now. But what it does, it takes this new Helvetica font it has and makes it slightly bolder, so the, the fonts themselves will be slightly bolder. Okay? Sure. I don't have um, iOS 7. Uh -huh. I, it came up one day and said, did I want it? And I said, not now. <laughs> and I've never seen it again. Okay, I'll show you where to get back into that in one second. Yeah. While we're on the screen, right below it, it says increase contrast. And that one doesn't require a, a reboot. And that one's, it's, that's not too bad to do. You can turn increase contrast on. It makes a subtle difference. Apple's all about subtlety and sometimes they're too subtle. So your question about software update, that's on an iPad. So if we go into general on the left, and if you go to software update, you'll see right here, software update. Don't do it here because it's going to struggle on the internet, I'm sure. Okay. Oh, but if you hit general, software update, and then it'll say, what it does is it downloads it first, and then it'll install. You get a black screen and, and go from there. But... Uh, iOS 7 is really slick, but you know, I'm also of the philosophy, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So if everything's working fine, don't feel you have to. You won't be scorned by everybody else, I don't think. So. 
Oh, she's only on iOS 6. Um, and if it did say you had it one time, you can do it. If you have, some people have older versions, and like iOS 5 or even 4, mm -hmm. they have to actually plug that into a computer to update. So. Go in the same general, right at the very top, it says about. So for Canadians, a boot. Right there, and then you scroll on down, and it'll give you the version number. Just do some touch screen stuff. Then. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. No, no, just okay. to have it open and just touch it a few times. Oh. Like you were doing. There you go. All right. So back in the mail. If you have, so I'm going to hit new mail, which is this little icon right up here in the right, and I get a new message. So always in the first part of the message, you're going to just start filling in somebody's name. But what I'm going to do is bounce down to the middle part of it, in the body of the message. Now, does who doesn't have a microphone on their keyboard? Everybody, you don't have a microphone on your keyboard, okay? Anybody else have a microphone right on your keyboard here? Um, no? I Tap in the middle of the screen right here, and the keyboard should come up. you got to be in mail. Oh, uh you have to be in mail. Uh-huh. Go to mail and just type, and go new message up in the upper right. Hit the little icon in the upper right. But I'm not online. That's okay. And then what do you do? Uh, you don't have a microphone. You don't have a microphone. You don't have a microphone. So you probably all have the iPad 2. Okay. You have a 2. Okay. You have a 1. You have an original. Okay, so you can't go to iOS 7 either, by the way. So... Um, October 22nd. A lot of times you can find somebody to sell your old ones to. <laughs> what was the question there? You have uh, well, I have a question. Uh, no, wait a minute. You're saying that uh, in October something we do get an upgrade copy? No. Never. There's new ones coming out oh, okay. that have Siri. So let me okay. show you the advantage of Siri because this, to me, going forward, I mean, you guys are pretty early trendsetters since you mm -hmm. had fairly early good versions of it. But... I'm going to sit here and I'm going to tap this microphone. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of the country. Period. New paragraph. When you speak, comma, make sure you say, comma, speak, comma, your dictation. Period. New line. If you want to say numbers, you would say numeral one, and you would say numeral six. That will give you the integer. New paragraph. If you say one, it spells it out. If you say five, it spells it out. Period. Hopefully the internet cooperates. There we go. So I said numeral one becomes a one. I said numeral six. But you'll notice here I said you say the numbers one, it spells it out. And five, it spells it out because I didn't say numeral one. Now, to me, that's worth the wait right there to get a new iPad because I didn't have to type a bit of that. And you'll notice there's no spelling or typo problems. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, so I can do that on my iPhone? Do what, if you have a 4S or newer, yes, you can. Okay. okay. And the 4S, kind of think of it as Siri, but if you have an iPhone 4S, a 5, or a 5S, or the new 5C, you would have Siri and you can do this. So again, the key is, when you get a keyboard, this comes up. Yeah. But what? remember this, this is actual speech-to-text dictation. It's not Siri yet. I'm going to tell you how Siri fits into this. But let's talk about what this is doing. It's taking what I'm saying, it records it, and sends it out over the internet to Maiden, North Carolina. And it crunches it up and sends it back to us as text. And, again, no misspellings because it consults a dictionary in, in case I spoke one. So the second component of that is, and I'm going to do a new return here, and I'm going to dictate two things. I'm drunk, new paragraph. Will I need a jacket tonight? Question mark. So I said I'm drunk, and it typed I'm drunk. I said, do I need a jacket tonight? It literal dictation. Let's see what Siri does with this. I just go to my main screen and I say, I'm drunk. Don't expect me to get you home. 
And on an iPhone, she'll come up and say, call me a taxi because the iPhone has a GPS and it will find the closest taxi service to where you are. And in fact, my one, well, I need a jacket tonight, I actually have to do on my iPhone because it has weather app in it. Well, I need a jacket tonight. I didn't say what would the low temperature be. I just said, well, I need a jacket. So Siri is artificial intelligence. She took, I'm drunk, and instead of just typing, I'm drunk, she interpreted, well, maybe you should drive home. Or, well, you need a jacket tonight. She didn't type that literally. She said, oh, okay. Maybe you just make, here's the temperature. Siri, also in iOS 7, you can use a male voice. Or not use, but she will, she will become a he and give you the stuff in the male voice. If you're traveling, for instance, what's the current? You guys need my microphone. Now, Siri won't like that. I mean. <laughs> what's the current temperature in Paris, France? It's 46 degrees Fahrenheit right now in Paris, France. Convert 46 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. Let me check that. Let's see. 46 degrees Fahrenheit converts to about 7.78 degrees Celsius. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh... The other one is, convert 350 euros to U.S. dollars. It's very handy. You see something in the store you want? Okay. Give me a moment. 350 euros converts to about 473.33 U.S. dollars. So Siri does everything you want it to do. I can say... Search the web for apple pie recipe. Here's what I found on the web. And I simply just tap on any one of those and it comes up and takes me. I can also, you know, I have about, on my iPhone, I have over 800 apps. I have about 300 apps on this. I can say, um, launch mail. And it'll launch my mail. So, um, we talked about um, Safari. So if we go to Safari, in iOS 7, you'll notice this is all one bar up here now. Remember, we used to have the Google search bar over here on this side. Now it's all one bar. So you just start typing in what you want. If you're going to Google search for apple pie, see, I'm searching for apple. I can go to apple.com or search, whatever, but I can just put apple pie recipe. And it's just like it, the Google search was. It comes up with my Google search. Okay? So, those haven't changed much. The big thing in Safari is the change of the Google search bar is removed. But, now who, who, had, who here doesn't have iOS 7? Okay. So I'm going to show you a couple features in iOS 7. If I take, I have to take my hand completely off the bezel here, and I'm going to slide up. And I get what's called the control center. And in the control center, if I have a song getting ready to play, I can play the song. This is my volume slider. If I'm getting on an airplane, I can do airplane <laughs> mode, my Wi-Fi, my Bluetooth. Uh, this is if you want to go to your clock for an alarm clock in there, right to your camera. But the other real handy one is screen brightness, which it won't reflect on here, but I can change my screen brightness right from here. And that's the control center. And how did I get there again? I took my, my fingers and put it off my bezel, and I slide up. I slide up. have to be off of it. You have to be in iOS 7. That's your control center. On your iPhone, you have a few more things on it. You'll have, your, you'll have a flashlight, actually. Let me see if I can... Go, oh, go ahead. Yes, I'd be happy to. 
This is a consent to be on a video that we just did. If you're comfortable with that, that'd be great. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is sign the top part. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, just the right amount of papers yeah. here. Thank Ten, ten, thirteen. It's the sleep wake button on the top right here. Okay. You have to press and hold it. Okay. And you don't usually need to turn it off. It lasts a long time without it being turned off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to actually go as soon as I get done. Oh, you see, you've got your flashlight working. Oh yeah. From yeah. your control center. I started when I was here today. I might actually stay on. And I was. I had it in my pocket and didn't realize it. So. Well, I have a crucial question for the iPhone. I can't seem to answer my incoming telephone message. If I'm okay. doing anything else on my iPhone, like if I'm in email, oh, you do. if I'm in email and someone calls me, I, I can't see. It should come up on your screen right away. You know what? Let's, since most of it's iPad, I'll deal, we'll work with it afterwards if okay, you want. Because then we can make a call back and forth. Okay. Okay? But it should do that. I mean, if you're in email, but it will stop. Who's your carrier? AT&T. Okay, so you can actually make phone calls and be on the internet at the same time with AT&T. Mm -hmm. So, or as I like to say, if you have a Verizon iPhone and a Sprint iPhone, and you can't make calls and be on the internet at the same time, and because AT&T's coverage is so bad, you just can't make calls anytime. <laughs> and I have AT&T. So that's our control center. To get it back down, I just simply drag it down. Okay. Does anybody remember in iOS 6, we had a thing when you press the home button, it went to a big black screen? That was called Spotlight, and it's the most powerful spot in all of your iOS devices. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger right on my screen here and drag down, and I get a search bar. And I can search for everything in my iPad here. So I'm going to just type in Escaton. And there was today's event was right there. If there was a PDF in here that had the word Eschaton in it, it would search inside the PDF and show it to me. If there was an email about Eschaton, it would show up in here. So to get that again, that's called Spotlight. And to get to it, you just put your finger anywhere here and drag down. And you get this search. And it searches everything inside. And it includes searching for your apps. And that's called Spotlight. No, you can't do it on yours because you're running iOS 6. And it's not from the lock screen. You guys, it's not from it's not from this screen. It's from the home screen where your icons are in slide down. Okay, that's iOS 7. That's new on iOS 7. On yours, on the old device, when you're on the home screen, if you just hit the home button, it'll go to all black. And that'll be a search also. So go ahead and tap your home button, slide to unlock. The home button's the big button on the bottom. Now hit your home button again. No, nope, don't hold it down. Just tap it. Tap it again. Tap it again. And you have the same search right there. That search is everywhere in your device. So that's an iOS 6. It's the black screen that comes up after your home button. Well, this work on two. Are you on iOS 7? Yeah, just. Slide down, there it is. Just grab in the middle somewhere. Don't go to the top, because if we go to the top, we get what's called our notification center. Upcoming appointments and things like that. So, all right. Now, I'm going to share with you what I think is the most important thing you can have on any iOS device. And I assume all of you are on the internet right now? So you're not on the Wi-Fi here? No, I didn't, I didn't have, I have my own Wi-Fi. Okay, my own so then just kind of take some brief notes. You know, I just realized we're not probably getting a very good recording here. 
but you'll see the screen. Anyway, um, go to Safari, and at the very top where you enter the website, tap on it, and I want you to type in help, H-E-L-P, no space, help. This is what came up on this. Yeah, are you interested? Are you in Safari? Let's see. Yeah. Well, I'm on, uh, it says select the wireless network. Yeah. Uh, what, is it the residence network that I'm encrypted? Yeah, it's supposed to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's something that has, I think. Enter password. Oh, well, hang on. Here I'm. Not in the Google side, we're going to do it on the main window right here. It's a cap there. Not on the Google side, but on the left hand side. This will work for those of you on iOS 6, and then what's funny is once you upgrade to iOS 7, it'll automatically change over. I so, have five, so this won't work at all. Mm -hmm. It'll mm -hmm. actually work in five. Just tap here. Okay, so I get a bunch of. Probably. Don't worry about it. Hit the X to the far right to get um, rid of it. And then what do I put in the search? Help. No, not in the search, not in Google. You're putting it over on the right, on the left-hand side. Right. Okay? So type in help. Okay. Dot, which is a period. Apple. Dot com. Then slash. Got to go to your numbers pad for slash. And if you've got an iPad, type in IPAD, no capitals, IPAD. So we get an apple.com, perfect. Help.apple.com slash iPad. Okay. Let me know everybody's got that there. Okay. If you've got it correctly, just hit go in the, on your button, hit return or go. Help dot apple dot com. Yeah. Oh, you're in mail. Let's go to some more. Let's go here. Yeah. It says tell Siri about yourself, but she doesn't listen to anything. It's adding its own. This is. Yeah. Oh, that's that. Well, it won't work on this because it's only. I'm sorry. This is only iPad. That help screen won't, it, it, what it does is it gives you information on the iPad. So. Okay, so. I know this is a little laborious, but yeah, this is really support. important. So I want everybody to be, you're not on that page, you need help out. You're good, stay where you are. Won't work on the computer. Here, let me grab your iPad. Well, I've done it three times and I keep flipping off. Well, then we should flip it off, right? Okay, so don't do anything there. Oops, you're perfect. Stay there. Oh, yeah, I think You've got it. I didn't have six. No, the six comes in automatically, and if you upgrade, when you upgrade to seven, it'll automatically fill in seven instead. Okay. Let me get you there. That's it. Perfect. John, are you there? Yeah, no. It will. No, because it's different because of the different operating so, systems. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you're, five, seven. So I want everybody to not venture from that page yet. Okay. So everybody should be on the page where I said that you were good on. So now, slightly different between the two operating systems. On iOS 7, you see this little box with the arrow going out of it. 
nobody else. If you want six, hang on a second. If you have iOS 7, you see this little box with the arrow going on. I want you to tap it one time. And you should get something that looks like this. Oh, yes. Okay? Here's what we want to do. We want to tap right here where it says Add to Home Screen. This is only 7. If you're only in iOS 7. You're in... Oh, I'm going to have to switch yours. Okay, so hold on to you guys. You guys ready? Did you hit Add to Home Screen? Mm -hmm. And you get this? Mm -hmm. Now tap Add. Okay. okay, those of you on iOS 6, it's great. let me borrow yours really quick so what did it do? and see if this will let us get up there. Yeah, you might have gotten it before. It might have said one, two, three. And the cool thing about that is, is when you upgrade, like when iOS 8 comes out, you use that same one and it automatically detects that you're running 8 and so it will upgrade according. Or if halfway through they do some sort of update, it will be there. Those of you with, with iOS 6, it was you, right? Okay. And you? Okay. You'll notice you have a little box with an arrow coming out. Okay. Tap that one time. And you'll see right in the center, it says Add to Home Screen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tap that. And then you can just hit Add. And now, everybody went to your home screen, and it looks a lot like an application, doesn't it? Yes, it but it's really just kind of a Safari bookmark. Mm -hmm. Let me get you there. Mm -hmm. we'll get it what, what unit is this? This is a 3 or a 4. Because you've got Siri, which is great. But you're running iOS 6, but that can be updated. That's a free update. So I'll just add it for you on your home screen. Those of you like here that, oop, not print. Uh, when you update to iOS 7, it uh, when you click that same guide, it will automatically detect you're on 7. Those of you with iPhones, instead of help.apple.com iPad, just say iPhone. And that's all. And you can do the same thing with that. Now, that was a little bit arduous, but it's really important because look at what we have here. And this came up with like the sleep wake button. If I tap on that and watch up here first, it is essentially in Safari. You have to be connected to the internet for this guide to work. You'll notice you have a table of contents over on the left side. And with that, I can say, for instance, iPad at a glance. And if I click on that, everybody look up here to go through first. iPad overview. It shows me all the button locations and everything. I can go down and learn things about Siri if I have Siri on my device. It won't automatically detect if you have Siri or not, but it will tell you about Siri. You guys have a little different one. You have the table of contents. It looks a little different on iOS 6. On the iPhone, this table of contents will be hidden, but there'll be a couple little lines right up here at the top. And that reveals the table of contents. So let me see if I can get... Yeah. And that is, again, the beauty of that is it's not anything that's fixed. It's using the internet to go get that information from Apple. So therefore, if they do new things, it'll show up there and you'll be able to learn about it. But this is the best self-help guide that there is. It's really, really, really good. Uh, no, you should have some stuff on the left side. And it's see it detects it says five up there. Hers detected she's running five, so it has a five on it. And I notice a lot of you have full size iPads. I love my iPad Mini. I had an iPad 2 before the Mini. Once I got the Mini, I never used my iPad again. And a big guy like me said, Oh man, that thing's heavy. <laughs> but 
for me, my up close vision is good. It's all about how well you can see. The amount of stuff you see is exactly the same on both of them. It's just larger on the full size iPad. So if I'm seeing this page, you're seeing the exact same page. You're just seeing it larger. You're not. I'm not missing anything. I'm just everything small, including the text. Okay. Can you make it bigger, by? Yeah, you can still do everything you can to make a bigger effect. It's exactly the same, but the thing is, is that I find that it's just if if sight's an issue, close up sight's an issue, get the full size iPad. It's just better for that, and it's not that much heavier. <laughs> and they all have about the same battery. Yeah, yeah, some people do. For me, it's a matter of I can put this in my pocket, and it's much more portable for me. But it's all about portability more than anything. You start to have another question or someone? It might be for afterwards, but okay. I get um, messages from CNN. Oh, you get yeah, it's notifications. Notifications. Also, it will bring up my son's email to me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe I don't want that showing for. A it only shows up for a minute or a second, a couple okay. seconds. That's notification. So let me show you where to change that. Okay. Because what happened is, is you went to CNN site or you went to, you have the CNN app and they probably said, would you like us to send you push notifications? Oh. I always say no, but you said yes. So let's show how to manage that. And that's okay. a good question. So I go to my settings screen. And in settings on the left side, Notification Center, it's the fifth item. Here's my Notification Center. It'll look a little different in iOS 6 on 5, but it's since I'm not sure if you have the notifications in 5. You may not have notifications in 5. Is there a, a thing it that says, says notifications? notifications? Good, go ahead. It must have started in 5 then, because we didn't have it before that. So what I want to do is I want to scroll down. And I actually, I'm sorry, I want to go to, uh, I take that back. So if I go to my left side, you're going to have a CNN over there. So let's go down to, I'll see if I have any that's in my notifications. Oh, let's see. Oh, wait a minute, on the left side. Go on the left side here. See how here's the top? I'm going to scroll down. Scroll all the way down and look for CNN. I'm going to go to Facebook because I know it might have some notifications. Well, it might be, uh, might be USA Today. Okay. So you go to it, and what happens is then you can manage your notifications in okay. settings on that app. It's controlled by each app. Okay. So, for instance, Gmail, no. I'm looking for ones that, because I turn all of mine off. Mm -hmm. Skype would be one. Yeah. I'll deal with yours separately on that. Sure, okay. But the mail one is up here in Notification Center. If I went to the top again to Notification Center, mm -hmm. and when I go to uh, down here, Include, actually there it is, it's filling in now. Messages, reminders, this is where your CNN would be. Oh, okay. And then see, I have my do not include. Oh, it's being delayed. Do not include is, I tell it not to include these. And so to change that, let's say, oh, let's say I want to go and I Southwest. So Southwest, I click on, and I can determine whether I want none, a banner, or an alert. I tell Southwest none. I have an app before that that tells me an hour. I, I have it set. So I want this one to give me a notification because I get a notification an hour before sunset and a half hour before sunrise since I take a lot of sunrise and sunset photos. So it will actually, on my phone, it doesn't do it on here, but on my phone, I get a little notification with a bing. And that way I know that I can, it's time to go see if there's a good looking sunrise or a good looking sunset before I rush out and take photos. But that's your notification centers. All right. What does badge app icon be? In notifications? Right. What the badge is, is 
that's it shows up in your the little uh, you now when you get mail that has a little red red badge. Yeah. Oh. That's what that is. Oh. Okay. Oh, another new thing. Those of you that travel in the App Store, which is full of hundreds of thousands of apps, they have a new thing that says local apps. So let's say you're Let's say Yellowstone wasn't closed and you wanted to go to Yellowstone. I tap near me and it will find apps specific to my location. So again, if you're traveling, that's really kind of handy. Uh, we've only got a few things here, SAC B, KCRA. I guess Carmichael's not the tourist spot that I thought it was. Oh, multitasking, all right. Everyone, whether it be five, six, or seven in iOS, if you double tap your home button, it's going to show you your most recently used applications. In I, the home button's a big round one, the only physical button on the face of the screen. Tap, tap, give it a tap, tap. Oh, oh, sorry. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. No, nope, okay. three times. Okay, try doing it only twice. Three times can cause other things. So what this is, is I can go through here and see my most recently used applications. But the thing is, is what happens if I want to quit one of them because it became unruly or something? Like here's a YouTube video. That was actually the Steve Jobs keynote. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to say, I don't want this here anymore. And I'm going to swipe it. Swipe it up. I'm going to swipe it up. Then you go and find it and turn it back on. It was there, it was off in suspended animation, and sometimes if you've ever had an app that you put it on, it doesn't work right, and this you might have to do what's called force quit. But the old wives tale is, is that you have to go in and quit all your apps because it's gonna affect your battery life. It only is, the forward app is the only one running. Sometimes you might get an app misbehaving. So again, to get to that screen, I double tap the home button, and on six and on five, you can do that, and you get a tray along the bottom is what happens in iOS 6 and iOS 5. And on iOS 6 and iOS 5, you actually press and hold on the icon, and then it'll do it. But it's a lot easier than this. All right. OK, just hit your home button. And it'll, it'll make them less nervous. Uh, those of you with iPhones and iOS 7, you can now block calls. Oh. That's huge. If you get that same robocall from that recording machine and they won't give up, you can go in and block the call. That's really, really good. Does anyone here have Apple TV? Okay. It's really cool. But, uh, yeah, Apple TV. Apple, yeah, it. Apple TV is like the Roku kind of thing. Yeah. Like this. In the newest iOS, to configure your iPhone or your iPad to it, you actually tap it. It gives it all your information from your iOS device. So I'm going to share here a few of my top apps. Because apps are what this stuff is all about. And many of the app developers have really optimized stuff for iOS 7. And let me get into, I'll try to get the phone on the screen here. Play. There we go. So I've got my phone right here behind me. And the reason I want to show you this, my favorite app, not my favorite app, but one of my most used apps. Uh, well, how many of you do online banking? And you go to that bank and you log in and you got to put your password in and then you do all this other stuff. Most of the time, you're not going to transact business. You're just going to see, did this payment clear? Did that credit card ch charge clear? What's this weird charge that's come up? You want a thing called Mint, M-I-N-T, like a breath mint. You can go to mint.com on your computer, or you can get the app called Mint on your iPhone or iPad. From iTunes? It's from the App Store. Don't download it now, but it's called Mint. When you first set it up, you already have to have an online ID with your bank account. 
and you go there and it connects to your bank account. It's very trusted. It's by a company called Intuit, which owns Quicken. And Quicken, they use this intermediary that the bank trusts. It's this one separate company who can't do any transactions or an intermediary that's trusted by the banks and trusted by Quicken. And that way Quicken never sees, or Mint never really sees your bank account. It's coming through this trusted intermediary. Mint's very, very safe because your account numbers never show up and you cannot do any transactions. Okay. It's the same. All you can do is see your balances. Yeah. And you know what? That's what you want. Yeah. So who cares? So I'm going to go into Mint. So and don't you have to have a password or something to get it in the Mint? You have to get your. You have to have online banking set up. Yeah. And it uses those credentials, and then they make a connection. Okay. So it takes a little while to set it up, but once you do, in fact, my credit union actually changed. They wanted to get more secure with their online, so I had to kind of re-enter that and stuff. But it's a pain that might happen once a year on you. But other than that, it's so useful, and I'll show you. So I'll go into Mint, and I have. Uh, well, here's like my credit card. So I go to my credit card. It shows my recent payments, or my recent transactions. And the best part is, like for instance, and I didn't, so Sierra View Country Club is where we have our empowerment conferences. Well, I bought lunch for two of us there, and it was $20. So if I tap on that, it wasn't really gym, it should be food and beverage, right? That's the category. So if I tap on my category, oops, if I tap on the gym category and say restaurant, it changed it to restaurants. At the, come tax time, and I can put notes on here, I can even put cash transactions in here. So this can be a great thing when it comes time to do taxes and see all your different stuff. But the other thing is, is these I didn't do anything to make these credit card transactions show up other than tell it what my credit card was with Chase, and it shows up here. If I go into uh, my checking accounts, like... This one, business checking, I can see here, there was a withdrawal, Sacramento County Utilities. Go through here. It was funny, I gotta show you this one's, this one came up and I couldn't understand what it was. And I had to go to the bank going, what the heck is that? Well, that's Web, P, G, and E. <laughs> and all the banks were getting calls because P, G, and E changed how it said it. Cause they like, and I looked, I go, that's only been happening in the last three months. And it was pg and &E changed the way it is, but I was able to find it from here. I set alerts on here that give me an alert if there's a withdrawal over a certain amount. And I can set that on specific accounts. So it's a great way to do fraud monitor. Ooh, what's this? And I can immediately contact the bank. It, it will tell you what it was, but not all, not, it doesn't always give you the full details. Mint.com, and you can do it on your computer, and you can print out spreadsheets of everything you want but through categories and the whole deal, and it's free. The only, only thing that's going to happen is I have my business checking account. I pay so much per month. It's not a free account, so I pay so much per month. They send a thing. Well, we noticed you paid bank fees. If you use the Ing Bank, you can go without bank fees. I get an email once a month. So what? Uh, you can also do budgeting with this, and it will tell you if you're over your budget or under your budget, and it, it's wonderful. You have it with you all the time. Excuse me. Do you, now, when you get Mint, do you have to put in your checking account number? Yes. The first time you yeah. enter it, you have to put in the, the credentials of your account. Right. Okay. And then they verify it with your bank, and they make sure that it's all trusted and yeah. it's all very secure. Okay. But uh, do anybody here listen to Clark Howard? He's a wonderful financial guru, a real... I consider myself a real cheap guy. He's even cheaper than me. <laughs> but he... he if he endorses it, that's the gold stamp of approval. Because he, well, he doesn't endorse it. He encourages it. He doesn't ever endorse anything. So, um, but Mint is very, very safe and secure. Millions of people use Quicken for their checking accounts and stuff, and it interacts with the bank the same way as Mint does. But remember, Mint can do can do no transactions. That's why you don't have to be worried. Worried, and that's why you don't have to constantly sign in. You're just looking at it. So. But nobody else can look at it. Well, they if they grabbed your phone. phone and went in, they could. But you know what? They're going to see your thing. But otherwise, if you lock your phone and have a passcode on, they can't. And if your phone gets lost or stolen, you can lock your phone. So that's a big deal. Uh, the other one is um, we have very few iPhones. I'm not going to do Yahoo Weather, but if you have an iPhone, Yahoo Weather is great. The iWork apps, Pages, Numbers, and Keynote 
are the word processing apps for the iOS device. From three weeks ago forward, if you buy any new Apple device, it will come with uh, pages, numbers, and keynote included in it. It used to be a small deal. It was like 10 to $15. So it, you won't get it on your existing device. It wasn't part of the upgrade. But if you buy a new device, maybe a new reason to go get a device with Siri on it. So you save what? You, you spend $400 to save 35 But, you know, that's the kind of economy I do on this stuff. Um, a lot of your book readers, I'm sure. So there's a lot of book apps. Uh, first and foremost, there is the Kindle app, which is wonderful on the iPad. Uh, the iPad Mini might be a little better for as a book app because when you fall asleep at night, the iPad Mini doesn't weigh as much, and when it hits you on the nose, it won't wake you up. But it is better reading, and, and most people say they like the Kindle app on the iPad better than the actual Kindle. So one second, I'll get to both those questions. The other one is you can check out books from the local library, whether it be audiobooks or, or regular ebooks. You need a library card, and it's called 3M Library. And actually, if you go to the library, they'll get you all set up with it. And just like regular books, if it's not in stock, you'll have to wait till somebody else returns it, and it'll be available to you. But it's all done electronically, and it's really, really neat. And the last one is iBooks for the... Well, actually, even the Nook app, if you're a Barnes & Noble subscriber, they have a Nook app. But iBooks for the iPhone and the iPad is available, too. So I had a question here first from Phyllis, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Oh, and then you had a question. Um, I've been looking for book reviews. Mm -hmm. Amazon's the best for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. In fact, not just for book reviews. If I'm looking at a product... Mm -hmm. I go to Amazon, first of all, to check if the price is competitive, because they're very competitive on pricing, but I read the reviews. And I see, oh yeah, you know, half the people really think that thing doesn't work very well. I go to deal sites all the time. If I see something on a deal site, I'll go to Amazon and say, is it, you know, is it a piece of garbage that I can get for half off, or is it something that's really worthwhile? So Amazon is wonderful for that. So, yep. And that's just, there's an Amazon app, or you just go to Amazon.com. Uh, the other one is TED, the TED conferences. Anybody familiar with those? TED. They have an app for your iPhone and your iPad, or you can go into iTunes and find them. But they are wonderful learning experiences. But beyond that, there's a thing called iTunes U. And let me show you that. Launch iTunes U. So, iTunes U is, actually, yeah, so, these are college courses and lectures from MIT, from Stanford, from Harvard, Princeton, Oxford, and they're completely free. They're not courses for credit, obviously, but they are, in fact, college lectures. It's still loading. I don't have much in there, but it's called iTunes U. And uh, it's wonderful. It's very similar to like the TEDs. The TEDs are more just speaking, you know, uh, 30 to thirty minutes to two hour speeches, but these are actual classroom professor-led lectures. It's an app called iTunes U and it's free and it's from Apple. ITunes U. U, as in university. Oh, okay. ITunes U. No, you can get TED one straight from Safari, but the TED app is better because it plays it back nicer, and you can you can catalog those. The other thing is, is I listen to a tremendous amount of podcasts, and podcasts are kind of the same thing. The TED ones are on podcasts, but I have like Clark Howard. I said he used to be on radio here, but they don't carry him any longer. So I went and found his podcast. He does two hours of radio a day, and I can listen to him commercial free the day after his show airs, and it's downloaded right to my phone or my iPad with podcasts, and it's all one word, podcasts. Um, iHeartRadio, uh, if you're out and about, I use that on my phone a lot. It gives you the clear channel stations. So like Tom Sullivan in the afternoon, you can hear him live. It's streaming. 
Um, oh, this is a great one for, actually it'll work for all devices. It's called magnifying glass and magnify glass and light, but it won't work as a light on the thing. But let me show you this. I have really small text here. And if you look at my iPhone, look at how big I can make the text. It uses the camera, and I can magnify things with it. Your iPad, now it has a light, but obviously the light part won't work on the iPad because there's no flash on the iPad. So is that an app? Yeah, it's called Magnifying Glass and Light. And the logo, let's see if it's... This is what the logo looks like here, this little blue one. Oh. And then that's the Mint logo right next to it, by the way, but that's the MagLight logo. It says Mag Dot, but it's magnifying glass and light. And it's free. That's why when I was running it, you saw there was a little ad at the bottom. That's how they monetize it. And it works great for reading those small print on menus. All right. Uh, those of you that have, uh, most of you have Comcast here for TV. Do you have a digital video recorder, DVR? Yes. Okay. You can get the Xfinity remote app, and you can set your DVR with this. Let's say you're down at dinner, and you know there was a show coming on, and you're in the middle of a card game, and you go, I'm not going to get back. Well, it's hard to do it if it's right then, but you can say, oh, I want to record that. And you can watch that schedule much easier from here than you can from even doing it on the screen. So it's Xfinity. It's called TV Remote. You just need your your Comcast ID. So here it shows all the things coming up. And I can click on, let's say, that's California's Gold. I can hit record. Or you can really drive, if somebody's back at your place watching TV, you can tell it to change the channel on them, and they'll swear there's ghosts in that. <laughs> but also, you can watch some live shows Similar to the on-demand you have with Comcast, some of that's available on the iPhone and the iPad, and believe it or not, different shows are available for the iPad than the iPhone because of the whole digital rights thing. But I can, I can uh, see those here. I can also go in and see what's on my DVR, my DVR manager, and I can see my scheduled recordings. Got the Sharks hockey game tonight, and I can see what's coming up. And I can see current recordings that I have. Which is 16. <laughs> no, this is very full. I wish I had a bigger DVR. No, well, because I don't watch all the ones on there. Anymore. I record them and then I get to them. Yes. But that's that's kind of the beauty of doing it like remotely and stuff too, as I can I can do that. Um, Dish Network has a really neat one that you can actually take the DVR content, so if you're going on a trip, you can take some of that and push it to your iPad, and it'll actually store it on the iPad and watch it. Okay. Yeah, we can't do that with Xfinity yet, but that's that's a huge thing. Yeah. I actually can watch my TV remotely with a thing called Slingbox, but it uses a lot of bandwidth. It doesn't store it. It's all yeah. streamed over there. So that's pretty much, that's a few of the top apps. Obviously the Maps app, I hope you guys use the Maps app a lot for finding different things. I'm sure John's gone over that with you guys. I know I went through it before. But let's kind of hear in the, in the moments we have is ask me any iOS, question, iOS 7 questions or problems first, except those specific ones we talk, we'll deal with afterwards, or any other questions or problems. I think you've already covered the one that I was going to ask afterwards. Oh, good. Okay. The notification one? Yeah. Yeah. Once I found where it was. They changed it in iOS 7 from iOS 6. So it threw me. Um, a lot of times, so that, you know, when you go to that site, it probably said, or that app, it says, do you want to use push notifications? Mm -hmm. Push notifications means it's going to pop up for you. Most of that stuff you don't want. If we lived in tornado country and it was the U.S. Weather Service app, yeah, we'd want push notifications if a tornado was coming. But that's about it. Most of the time I don't. But also sometimes it'll say, can I use your location? Usually say yes to that because the nice thing about that is if I'm searching for the nearest uh, restaurant, 
it's got hamburgers, you want to use your location. So you had a question though? I did, and uh, I just lost it. It's okay, we'll come back to it. You'll remember it as soon as we go on to somebody else. Oh, I know, excuse okay. me. Um, I just uh, deleted my um, Find Your Friends. Okay. Because some app or some, some, some email perhaps asked me or said we will uh, we will use all of your friends, you know, and email them. Okay. And I thought I don't want them to email all. And you sure that was the Apple Find My Friends, the little brown yeah, icon with yeah, two people? Uh -huh. I think it said it'll search your contact book if you wanted to, your address book. But that's from Apple, and it's very trusted. Oh, okay. And it's a great thing in certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you're at Cal Expo at the State Fair, oh. and you want to, you're with there with someone, and you go, "Well, yeah, I'm over by the the cement building, the gray building." Okay, well, there's about twelve different gray buildings. Whereas if you both have, and both people have to agree, mm -hmm. if Find My Friends is on, you can see where they are, and they can see where oh. you are, and you can pinpoint and say, "Here we are," and you can set that permission to last for a certain length of time and only be with certain people. I don't keep it on usually, but for instance, when I'm vacationing with my, the rest of our family and things like that, I'll put it on there sometimes because we can see what it is, or how many times we do it, like over Thanksgiving, our whole family goes down to San Diego, and this way we can see where everybody is in the car on the way down. Oh yeah, we're going to pull over and get dinner here. Are you behind us or in front of us? Well, I don't know. The road's got three lanes here, and you know, or, or traffic's coming up, okay, things like that. So those are useful times for it, but... Uh, Think of it as a tool, and believe me, it's from Apple. It's to be trusted. Okay. It wouldn't email them. It's just saying, can I use your contacts and then see if anybody's local nearby? But, again, both sides have to agree, and you can make that agreement be all the time or just part-time. Okay. And to be honest, with dementia patients and stuff, too, that's not a bad thing. Oh. It can really be useful to keep that on because you can see where they are, huh. and uh, it's quite beneficial. So, any it's other questions? Again. Go ahead. Questions? It's called again. Oh, that's Find My Friends, and it's from Apple. And it uses the GPS location device on the thing. So, so can I go state to another state? Anywhere in the world. Uh-huh. They, they're, they are using their GPS. You're using your It's not like a walkie-talkie where you have a limited amount of range. Now, it's not to talk to the other person. You can mm -hmm. message the other person. Mm -hmm. But it shows you where on the map they are. Oh, okay. And so, but that's why it's important that the privacy is, is they have to agree to accept your invitation and you have to agree. And then you could say, okay, good for two days or good for two hours. And then it can expire. So it's very careful on that. Well, is there, any, any more questions? Oh, we got one here? Got is, one here, good. Yeah. Is, does Apple have a TV now? More or less. They have a thing called Apple TV, which really only does like Netflix and your content from your device. They, and I don't think, well, I'm not sure if they're ever going to make a TV TV because if you look at what Apple's history is, they were, they were never the first to market. They were the best to the market. They weren't the first personal computer, but they did it right. They weren't the first MP3 three player, but they made the iPod right. They weren't the first one, well, they were surely the first one to make a smartphone, but they weren't the first one to make a phone. You had trios and stuff before, but it revolutionized the phone business. And of course, now there's all these copycats. Lots of people made tablets before they made this. So if, if the question is, is Apple going to make a TV screen? They might as part of something else, but they won't make a TV screen just to make a TV like everybody else's. The key to everything, if you think about it, it wasn't the iPod. It was to be able to get the stuff, the music, into the iPod. It wasn't that it can make calls. It's all the other things it can do. If they can do something revolutionary in TV content, they'll do it. And it may be a little box, or it may be a screen, or it may be either. And... The problem is, so when Apple invented iTunes, they had to fight like crazy to get the music companies to agree 
to let Apple sell songs, first of all, to let them sell songs, because everybody else was stealing songs. Apple said, let's make it easy. Then the, the, the record company says, well, no, you've got to charge $1.39 for these and $0.80 cents for these and all that. Apple, Steve Jobs says, no, no, no. We're going to make it one price. We're going to make it easy. We're going to make it so that people don't have to pirate the music, make it easy for them to buy. So they relented. The other thing that was really hard for the music companies is, well, you know, we sell albums because that gets the other songs out there, and there are nine, nine, you know, whatever they were. So Apple did albums too. But that was a huge, huge, huge thing to break that barrier down. Apple is the largest seller of music in the world now. And the record companies are making boatloads of profit off of it. But it's also democratized because the record business is really like a mafia thing. The artists make virtually no money off the record sales. They make the money off their tours. They're indentured slaves to the record companies. The Beatles are smart. They had their own Apple Records. They had their own company. Some of the other groups have done that. I think with iTunes, you're gonna, it's breaking that model. If it gets number one on iTunes, it's selling a lot of stuff, and a lot of these artists are going direct. And Apple's very fair, because what they do is they share, like on these apps, if you buy an app for a dollar, the app developer gets 70 cents of that. Apple keeps 30 cents for doing the credit card, for doing all this intermediary stuff, and for keeping it on their server. So it's a very fair way to do it. It's no frills, boom, that's the way it is, and nobody gets a discount. It's exactly what it is. If they can do something revolutionary in TV, they will do it. Indications are it will probably be something like where... Well, for instance, we've got a lot of Comcast people here. I'm going to turn off the recording. We've got a lot of people that talk, said they had Comcast. I never watch ESPN. I watch Sharks Hockey and other stuff, but I've, I never tune into ESPN. I'm just that way. But Comcast has to pay ESPN $15 a month for me and for you and for you and for you. 